My guest today is Tim Kravchinovsky. Tim is the founder and CEO at Chirp, which is, yeah, kind of like a, a global deepen network. Um, yeah, an IoT solution provider. There's a lot going on. We'll learn all about this today. Welcome to the show, Tim. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Andy, for having me. It is a pleasure, Tim. Let's do what we do at the beginning of the show. It would be great if you could please introduce yourself, really. Love to hear some of your personal and professional backstory. What have you been doing uh, that has led you uh, to found Chirp? Sure. So uh, my name is Tim, founder um, of uh, Chirp. My uh, personal story is fairly boring. I uh, graduated in computer science and worked my entire life as an engineer. So uh, um, that's, that's, that's really it. Uh, about four, uh, three years ago, started the uh, Chirp. We have been building throughout all this bear markets. Uh, it was really the perfect time to build, but we survived one of the longest bear markets out there. So we're pretty happy about that. Uh, and uh, the whole product is, uh, has developed immensely during those three years. So what we're doing in Chirp is we're building this uh, global um, and ecosystem for RWAs. So RWAs, they essentially real-world devices that need to communicate with each other with the internet and with the blockchain. So there's many different use cases. There's decentralized ride sharing, uh, decentralized uh, energy grids, decentralized uh, charging stations for electric vehicles. And all of those devices, sensors, they are at RWA and they are IoT. And essentially what we do at Sharp is we're building this ecosystem for providing the connectivity, but also let all of those sensors and devices talk to each other, regardless of the wireless technology that they use. This the different uh, sensors, all of the different devices, they use different uh, radio frequencies or different uh, uh, wireless technologies to communicate with each other. And uh, essentially, we're breaking this fraction of the space, and we're letting all of those devices see each other. So that's what we're doing. Yeah, and it's uh, there's quite a, a big, a ambitious, uh, global kind of, of project, Tim, uh, that is obviously based on, you know, blockchain rails, but uh, in, in the real world as well, Deepin. So a lot going on. Give us just a sense uh, before we keep diving into it in terms of, I guess, where the where Chirp is at at the moment. I think uh, last time, we caught up. You guys were about to launch a, a test net with a main net to follow. Where are we kind of at in terms of like the the chirp token um, and and that part of the project? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, we uh, we actually launched our test net several months ago. It was a successful test net. Uh, we have been testing uh, and uh, uh, testing ever since. Right now, we're ready to launch. We're ready to go. We uh, we're just look uh, really, really good. So we think you now our launch is uh, right around the corner. So we're building these Yato systems. Yato systems also, those guys, they're getting the uh, attention that they deserve. Uh, they have done the digital system. Uh, finally, the community uh, is realizing that we see uh, what a powerful project it is. So, uh, yeah, that being said, uh, very close uh, to the launch. Our network uh, already spans 30 countries. We sold out uh, two test batches of our miners, and uh, we literally sold out in the show of hours. So, uh, we sold two batches. So, and uh, those miners are now installed in 38 countries with this really impressive magic and you know, for what to call the new additions to grow that group. Yep. Just to explain again a little bit more about yeah, how how Chirp works and, and what the network is, um, who are the kind of different providers that, that power that network, and also i uh, love to understand more about who the end users of Chirp can be. I'm sure there's various different buckets of, of end users, but just walk us through uh, some of that because it's, it's quite a lot to get your head around, uh, Tim. Yeah, sure. So, um, uh, so our, our remaining, 
of Rogas of our project is actually mining and providing the uh, uh, connectivity uh, for IoT devices. We have big antennas, they're called Blackbirds. There's this small box is actually, uh, it's a telecom grade uh, equipment, and uh, there's multiple radios in here, so you see several antennas, and there's uh, several close range radios in here as well. So, and this is exactly what we do. We're uh, trying to bridge uh, all of the devices that there's different poles and the one ecosystem. So you can, uh, let's say, like a video camera from one manufacturer. And this, this is exactly the problem that we're solving. You know, like starting with Apple, when, when they created that uh, charge cable, that was a proprietary charge cable. So Apple was sued for that recently, being a global company. But all of the smaller guys, they're not going to quit rush to change the model. They really like that model of their customers tend to use the and essentially, when you buy an IoT device, that IoT device most likely works with the application from that manufacturer. And it does not seem to other devices, other manufacturers, and so on. And this is exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring this fraction IoT space where you can buy devices from different manufacturers. And for example, you know, if you can get the video camera to a power platform that uses one radio technology. When the movement is detected from a video camera, it can send a signal, for example, to a certain restaurant in the manufacturer. So this this Blackbird that has already four radios in here, which has joined other radio alliances that are developing different radio protocols and communication protocols, and uh, we're going to be introducing more on times. So essentially, we can just install the antenna and you can build this radio agnostic IoT devices. And basically, you get rewarded with uh, chip token for installing those and providing the service. Yeah, so the, the, the incentive is if people want to install those devices and run them themselves and help contribute to the network as well, yeah, they, they, they will get tokens. So, how, how can people get a hold of those devices if, if they wanted to participate, Tim? So, so we sold two test batches. The next batch, uh, the, the sale of the next batch will be an open OETG, which is very, very close. So, but if somebody's interested in buying them, there's my encourage them to follow us on Twitter, uh, sure, sure, UI, UI students for decentralized wireless. So, in, we're on our Telegram and the link is on Twitter as well. So, this is what we do with uh, the wireless signal. But then, most importantly, we're not just in the uh, we offer a lot more, and we are fixing this um, fraction IoT space, and we're offering different tools for any type of project that is building or to speed up the go to market. Let, let, let me just give you a technical example. So, you, for example, if you have uh, ten different car trackers, you are building an application for decentralized ride sharing, for example. You will be forced to use different car trackers because most likely you're going to be operating in one country. Some manufacturers might have licensing in one country, but they will not have licensing in another. So they'll have to use a different car tracker in another country. Both of those, you know, all of those trackers, they're supposed to transmit the same information. But it's actually not straightforward to collect them and to decode the information those provides because there is absolutely no standard in IoT. And this is exactly what Chirp is doing. We're simplifying the connectivity of different devices. So uh, if the project is taking decentralized card sharing, they can leverage that and they can just insert a card tracker and it's going to work for them. They don't have to uh, deal with intricacies of IoT. Uh, they just throw a decentralized one. And this is how we speed up their vote. And there's a whole bunch of tools. Uh, uh, that, uh, evolved around and the block. Yep, got it. Uh, makes sense, Tim. Why is that kind of you know global IoT um, connectivity issue such a, a convoluted uh, mess? I mean, you, your background is is telecom, I guess, so you kind of have more insight than than most into this. Is it just a matter of you know, different countries and, and companies working with different standards and, and, and no one ever agreed on, on a, a kind of a, a simpler way forward for everyone? 
Uh, well, that that as well. Uh, so, like like I said, like everybody is trying to lock their customers in. So there's no like, open system where you could connect everything together. But most importantly, all of the devices they use different um, wireless technologies to communicate with each other and with the internet. And there's no standard solution for that uh, because it's, it's just the way radio technology operates. Some radio technologies can transmit over very large distances that can transmit very little data. So in here, you can use that wireless technology for sending video, for example. It's not going to work. So that's why we have uh, a whole bunch of those radio technologies. And there's no standard radio. And that's what we're doing the chip. We're uh, essentially uniting them. So we use different uh, uh, devices that use different radio technologies, and we will still see a dog. And are you focusing on the U.S. or kind of globally different different jurisdictions around the world? What's your primary uh, area of focus to begin with, Tim? Yeah, yeah. Essentially, it's global. So our network uh, is already deployed in thirty-eight uh, countries around the world. So uh, yeah, it really doesn't matter where you are. It's it's, it's a global project. It's a SaaS platform. So uh, software as a service and connectivity as a service so this is this is what what we do it's uh it's in the cloud so you can do this anywhere and you're kind of part of the the the, the deepen movement as well decentralized physical infrastructure there's you know a lot of a lot of talk about various uh different deepen initiatives all this year really you know to uh, one stage become one of the kind of leading um, yeah, narratives of of the crypto market, I suppose, and maybe that's still the case. I know uh, Moody's uh, ratings; they released a pretty interesting report on on Deepin, um, emphasising its potential to support existing network growth and and innovation. And as you've kind of identified, I, I guess uh, yeah, various other decentralised products are, and services are, are able to utilise different Deepin networks, aren't they? Uh, exactly. This is uh, so. So deep end is a very hot narrative right now, uh, and for a reason. Uh, so uh, if, if you think centralized telecom company, just think about this. How come you do not see uh, uh, telecom companies before in the whole country? So uh, in, in the U.S., there's a huge. Uh, but but he, uh, Verizon. Uh, so Verizon is uh, in in the U.S. It might be in Canada. I'm not sure, or you know, like somewhat of both. But it's not a global company. And there's a simple explanation for that. When uh, when you are a centralized company, uh, it's very difficult to deploy your infrastructure. You have to have rooms on land. You have to have a lot of uh, Fine. You have to have a lot of money. For somebody to start a centralized telecom company, you would probably uh, have billions and billions of dollars to start. Uh, so in here, we're giving this power to the community to build this IoT network, which is so you buy an antenna, you already have a post. You don't need to lease land to install that antenna. You don't need to sign agreements to pull uh, electricity. So on and so forth in the future. You already have all of uh, And uh, it's essentially, the rollout is uh, a lot quicker uh, uh, because we don't have to employ the crews on land. Uh, the, the, the deployment uh, can speed is very, very quick. So th- that's that's the power uh, of Deepin and. Uh, we're essentially letting the community part of the telecom industry. So telecom industry is five billion dollar industry, and here every person is becoming. Yeah, and th- how do you stay nimble around the world, Tim, in terms of you know making sure that I guess you need to be in compliance with with different rules and and regulations for for different network. Uh, infrastructure and, and rules uh, around the world. How do you think about that? 
Uh, well, like I said, you know, there's multiple radio uh, technologies, multiple wireless technologies that uh, this is uh, those wireless technologies that are license free. I mean, yeah. right. uh, license free. So, all uh, heard of Wi Fi. Wi Fi is just one of the technologies that connects your phone. Through the internet, sort of Bluetooth, also Bluetooth connects the headphones with your know, phone, for example. And all of those uh, wireless protocols, uh, different video protocols, they're uh, license free. Uh, but there's, uh, there's a huge number of them. There's about 15 million radio technologies that connect the device. So most, most of the frequencies are license free. We utilize uh, also the license. I like on, on, on your website, uh, on the Chirp Token website, Tim, uh, there's a great quote where you talk about how we've been uh, dreaming about a technological future for generations. For, for those of us who grew up watching the Jetsons or, or Back to the Future, you know, you can imagine that the world is still a little bit underwhelming compared to what it was supposed to be. But now with IoT and decentralization, uh, we can start to make that happen, not someday, not eventually. Uh, but now, so yeah, just give us some context as as to what you're talking about there, Tim. Exactly. So it's if 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 you think about the IoT uh, space, it's all around us, but uh, we really uh, don't feel it because we don't use it residentially. So in the residential market, it's really not taking off to a full potential to a full extent, and that's just because of the difficulty of use. Typical it is to use the IoT devices how this to implement. So this is what we are uh, solving in sure. But uh, on, on the commercial scale, IoT is already huge. Uh, if you think about any type of vehicle, commercial vehicle on the road, it has multiple IoT sensors, it has uh, multiple connectivity options, PS drivers, uh, uh, so on and so forth. And if you Think about the larger picture. Uh, we are we really have that huge IoT industry. Uh, it's a two hundred million dollar industry. Uh, but when we did our research, we struggled to find a company that is making over hundred million dollars a year. So you see that it's two hundred billion dollars and a handful of companies that are making hundred million. So where? is all of that IoT. There's like literally thousands and thousands of small IoT guys that are working on this uh, a proprietary app, a proprietary device that connects with their app so on and so forth. There's absolutely no standard. If you look at the larger picture, there's a autonomous, autonomous driver that's already being tested. Just think about how many vehicles we have on the roads and when actually a was driving, how many sensors it will be, how much connectivity will be needed. And there's absolutely no standard uh, in here. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. So we are uh, trying to build something enormous here where we can make this, let's say, autonomous driving where everything is interconnected, where everything is trying to make our life easier. But we don't have the infrastructure for it. And uh, hopefully, Chirp will solve some of those issues that we are facing where we can connect uh, those uh, uh, devices and where we can connect all of the manufacturers and infrastructure. Well, yeah, and funnily enough, I'm sure you've seen that Tesla are supposed to, ha I think they have an event, might be next week, um, which is very widely rumored or speculated to be about their robo-taxi reveal. And so, you know, obviously Elon Musk is famous for announcing things that um, are maybe uh, not quite ready for, for deployment and not quite meeting those deadlines, but he's very much I've been talking about this world where, you know, people's Teslas can be updated to essentially become, yeah, robo taxis, um, driverless cars. And yeah, I mean, what, what you're talking about, Tim, is in, in that kind of world, yeah, there's, there's just going to be incredible demands on sensors and connectivity and just a, a means for, for people to get their, 
their pizza delivered by drones and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it's, uh, when, when we think of IoT, it's not really, uh, you know, some residential devices. There's multiple sensors that control large factories. There's uh, sensors that uh, control the cities, uh, uh, traffic lights, uh, so, uh, so on and so forth. And, uh, we're building such a powerful ecosystem that it will be easy enough to use for anybody in the residential space. Uh, but we also have a lot of things that tailor to the professional industry, to, to manufacturers, art cities, uh, autonomous driving, so on and so forth. So it's a, it's a really powerful tool. Yes, it is. All right. Well, look, for people that want to take a deeper look at Chirp Wireless and what you guys are building, what is the best way for people to do so? What should they do? Where should they go to? So, uh, chirptoken.io is our website. Um, well, I encourage everyone to uh, take a look at that. Uh, and obviously, Twitter, crypto space is all on Twitter. Uh, so, uh, chirp, uh, chirp DY on uh, Twitter. Uh, next, next week, we're going to be uh, releasing the first deep end game with a real world utility. So, that's going to be really exciting. Uh, where uh, you have a very low uh, barrier to entry, or actually you have no barrier to entry that you can use your phone uh, to facilitate uh, an ecosystem using foreign sharp tokens. So just keep your, um, um, keep your eyes out on Twitter. Uh, it's going to be announced hopefully next week. So that, that's, that, that's going to be a huge event in the future. Uh, it's going to be definitely before the law. Awesome. So the website, folks, is chirptoken.io. Link is in the show notes, of course. Uh, thank you, Tim. It's time to start to finish up the show. And, of course, we do that by running you through uh, the very famous Crypto Conversation hot take round. Uh, Tim, are you up for it? Yeah, sure. All right, I'm just going to <laughs> just going to run some questions at you, Tim. Don't worry, no right or wrong way to do it. Um, just want your honest answers, hot take style, if you like. Question one for you. Let's see what you say. Uh, where would you say that you sit on the Bitcoin maximalist to multi-chain opportunist spectrum? Tim? Uh, so I'm definitely not a maximalist. Uh, for I, I I believe in cryptocurrency. I believe that uh, cryptocurrency space has uh, enough for everybody to uh, participate. And there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, different projects out there that are developing in any direction. So um, I really like uh, Bitcoin, uh, but uh, it has a lot of limitations. So yeah, crypto in general, not a maximum. Yeah. <laughs> makes, makes sense, Tim. Uh, what would you say then is your firmest conviction crypto opinion okay so uh yeah decentralization is really the future and i think spin is the future uh in our WA. so i truly believe in that and uh it's it's time for a centralized way of how we were doing business i think it's time for that so. yeah all right well look uh, bill gates famously said that we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in two years and underestimate what we can accomplish in 10. So, you know, with that in mind, Tim, 10 years is a long time, but, you know, deep in IoT, what does it all look like in 10 years' time? 10 years' time, uh, we're going to see definitely autonomous driving. We're going to see uh, smart cities, and uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, the companies uh, in the decentralized space uh, participate in that. We're already seeing a lot of attention and the, uh, in, in the spend space, uh, but in here we're really lowering the barrier to entry uh, for any project. You can start a company with a lot less funds uh, with uh, the power of deep end and with the power of that crypto community. So this is uh, uh, our future is bright and technological. Yes, indeed. All right, another way of thinking about this is uh, a quote by William Gibson, who famously said that the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. Uh, with that in mind, Tim, can you think of an example of the future being here right now 
uh, but most people aren't aware of it. Well, well it's, 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 it's a blockchain industry in general. Uh, I mean, I mean like, look, we've been uh, trying to convince people that this is uh, the new, uh, the biggest creation from the inception of the blockchain over 30 years. And uh, the crypto community grows uh, on a daily basis. We're still far from onboarding everybody watching this ship. So, uh, yeah, most, most, most definitely it's the crypto industry. It has the future, but not everybody understands it and everybody's on board. Exactly right. Could not have said it better, Tim. And it brings us nicely to our final question, which is, what is your favorite science fiction uh, book, film, or TV show? I'm really bad with uh, uh, with those films uh, and it's just, you know, like, I, I watch them, I like them, I watch a lot of uh, Netflix, uh, but uh, it goes in one ear and uh, comes out the other. Uh, so I, I'm really good at the names, so. No, uh, I, uh, I understand. It is a bit, it's, a bit, it's a bit like that with the, uh, yeah, the, the paradox of uh, limitless choice. Sometimes it's just hard to find anything to watch and it just... Yeah, it goes straight through you. Yeah, just uh, exactly. part of being. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I watch a lot of movies, like those movies, but I can't really say that they uh, that they stick you know, out and they sing and uh, so. No problem, Tim. I guess we reach the end of the show. Uh, to just finish off, Tim, um, I would thank you. It's been uh, wonderful hanging out with you today, and I would invite you to once again just. Share where you like to hang out online, uh, your Twitter handles, all that kind of stuff. And of course, um, yeah, the various websites for Chirp. What should people do? Where should they go just to stay in a loop? Yeah, just uh, two places, chirptoken.io uh, and uh, uh, chirpdy on Twitter. Those are the two main places. And just, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be you know, Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Tim. All the best. And bye for now. Yeah, thank you so much. Take care.